Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to be showing you guys how I avoid flashback in photos and the makeup that I choose to wear when I know that I am going to be photographed. I think this video is especially important this time of year when there's going to be a lot of like holiday parties, maybe dinners with the family, and New Year's obviously. This past week I celebrated a few birthdays in the family and Thanksgiving, so there were a few times this week where I was photographed with that iPhone flash, and sometimes that iPhone flash can be a little bit scary, especially when you get the photo back and your face is just like white and blotchy and you don't know how that possibly happened because your makeup in person just looks so good. But these are the products that I use when I know I'm going to be photographed and there is a new product in here that I discovered is perfect for flash photos. And I honestly couldn't believe my eyes. I like hardly even needed to face tune myself because it was so good. I'm just going to quickly go through my skin prep. I am going to be using the Rael Beauty Good Chemistry Advanced Antioxidant Serum. I really am enjoying this product. They sponsored a video a few weeks ago and I have just been loving it. I'm also going to go in with my Glossier Priming Moisturizer Rich. If you didn't know, I am a Glossier rep. So if you shop through my link down below, you will save 10% off of your purchase. And because the foundation that I'm about to use is so matte, I am going to go in with my Glossier Future Do. I hope some of you guys picked this product up during the Black Friday sale that Glossier just had. I freaking adore this product. So this product is very important to the look. I like to use the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. Right now I am currently in the shade 18 Pecan and this is definitely like a true winter shade for me. I could not wear the shade in the summertime. However, in the summertime, I like to wear 21 Sable. So what I do is I mix these two shades when I know I'm going to be photographed. It might look a little teeny bit darker in person. However, in photos, it will look your perfect shade just because the flash going onto your face is going to make your face appear lighter anyway. And I mainly put a larger amount of the lighter shade or like my current shade and just kind of like so I do like a two to one ratio and it really doesn't look too off in person like honestly if I wasn't talking about it right now you probably wouldn't have thought anything of it but it's just like my kind of thought process I'm actually just gonna take a brush because I don't have time to sit here and pounce the beauty blender into my skin but I love the finish of this foundation. I think it is so beautiful. It is a matte finish, but I believe with all my extra skin prep underneath, it ends up feeling okay. It doesn't feel very tight and matte on the skin. It's also probably my longest wearing foundation. Sometimes at the internship, I will even not set this with any powder and I'll still look okay at the end of the day even though my days can be like nine hours long and I do find this foundation to be very full coverage but feel lightweight on the skin like I don't need a thick layer of it and the foundation itself is also very thin it's not very thick I have been loving the Jeffree Star concealer I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I do just because it was like another, just another concealer, but I still wanted to try it. I used the shade C15. It is an olive undertone. They were sold out of the warm undertone, and I still believe that the warm undertone would suit me a little bit more. I think it's the shade C16 that I would really want, but it's sold out on the Jeffree Star website, and it was sold out in the Morphe store that I went to, so kind of a bummer. I don't think that this is my exact match, but... It's all right with me. It doesn't look too, too bad. I also personally try and choose concealers that are not 
so, so far off from my natural skin tone. I know a lot of people do prefer wearing concealers that might be a few shades lighter. I don't mind going a shade lighter, but I feel like when you get too, too light, that is where you kind of risk more of like a flashback appearance and it will just end up looking really silly. And I like to blend out the concealer underneath my eyes very, very last so that it has some time to kind of set on the skin a little bit so it can be a little bit more full coverage when you blend it out. It's almost like it had some drying down period where it could really like sit on the skin and be as full coverage as possible and then you blend it out to kind of smooth everything out. The Jeffree Star powder I think has changed my life. I do not think I will ever put myself in a situation where I am photographed with flash photography again and not wearing this powder. I don't know how he did it. I don't know what is in this powder, but it makes my skin look absolutely flawless, like so smooth and it, it's beautiful. It is beautiful in photos. So I take some of my sponge and I apply it right underneath my eyes. It also smells so good. And I take some on my chin and around my mouth because I crease there a lot. And then on my forehead. And I mainly try and like press it into the skin. This powder is just so beautiful. It is unreal, like unreal. It makes everything look so smooth and beautiful and flawless. Really, it changed my life. Oh, I use the shade beige in it. I feel like that's important to say. Just because there is a translucent one, I know that there's a banana one, but I use the shade beige for my like medium warm skin tone. For my bronzer, I always use the Becca Bronzer in Bronze Bondi. It is a beautiful bronzer for my skin tone. I also like to sell this product to people with um, really fair skin. They have a much, much lighter one, but I like to apply my bronzer um, kind of everywhere, especially when I am being photographed. Just because of that like bright flash going onto your skin, you will lose some like of your face shape and deepness in your skin. It'll just end up being really bright. So if you kind of pack on the bronzer, then you won't lose any of that. And then I like to put some on my nose, kind of like in the middle of my face because that's where the light hits the most, I feel, is the middle of your face, so. I do feel like I put a little bit too much bronzer on my forehead. I think that the brush just had like a lot, so I am going to take my foundation brush and just kind of press it in. If I'm really trying to like be very bronze, I'll take a smaller angled brush. By the way, this was the Real Techniques Rebel Edge Broad brush. It comes in like a trio pack, and then I'm just using a regular angled brush and I will just apply it like directly on my cheeks right over here. I feel like the other brush does just like a really good job. So for my highlight, I like to avoid very bright sparkly highlights whenever I know I'm going to be photographed. That is why I typically like to do a baked highlight and I discovered two new baked highlights that I like quite a lot. My first one is from Essence. It is the Pure Nude Highlighter and this is in the shade 10 Be My Highlight. So this one is really pretty. It is really just a glow from within. Very nice ethereal looking. And then the other highlighter that I like a lot is the Honest Beauty Highlighter and this one is the Illuminizing Glow Powder in Midnight Reflection. So yeah, I like these two highlights a lot. However, if I was going to wear a nice bright highlight, I would use the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in Champagne Pop. My thing with highlighters and being 
photographed with a highlighter on is I always like to wear my highlighter underneath my blush. I find that it looks a lot more natural and definitely gives you more of a glow from within and it makes the highlighter look undetectable. I have seen too often that highlighter strip and I just don't think that that's very flattering on anyone. That's why I like to wear my highlighter underneath. Even when I'm not being photographed, I really just like to wear my highlighter underneath. It's just a preference of mine. So I am going to go in with my Essence highlighter. It is so dirt cheap too, so that's really great. And I'm just applying it. See how the light just hits that so beautifully? And there's no like sparkle or chunky glitter in it. It is just so, so gorgeous. And I'll hit my nose with it. And a highlighter like this, since it is baked and more natural and just, you know, just more subtle, I guess, I do feel comfortable putting it on other parts of my face, like my forehead and my nose and my chin. A lot of the times I do like to wear a matte blush in this situation. I feel as though the Clinique cheek pops are a little bit more of like a satin finish. They don't have a large amount of shimmer in the blushes, but there's definitely a glow to them. So I really like this one in the shade Big Pop. This is my second blush. Both of these products have been like repurchased. Like I hit full, full pan on them and had to get new ones. But I like to use this blush. I think it's very flattering for my skin tone. Um, I also do like to kind of load it up on the blush a little bit so that I know that the blush is going to add like nice color into my skin in the photo. But I don't do anything to be like too, too much where it's going to make me look crazy in person, you know what I mean? There's like a fine line. There's a fine line for sure. So what I like to do next is I take my Jeffree Star powder again and I take whatever is on the cap, which is usually like not, oop, which is usually not too much. And I like to go in with my Morphe M500 brush and swirl it into the lid. And this is where I go and just kind of lightly dust my skin. Make sure I get off any extra powder that was left from the baking that we did earlier. And I just like to go over everything. If I find that my bronzer and my cheek products are a little bit kind of messy in this area, I'll show you what I do. I don't do this every single time, but sometimes it is necessary. I will just take a little bit of my powder and kind of just press it in there just to kind of brighten up everything. So it's kind of like a nice line, and then I will go in and wipe it away. Sometimes I will let it sit for a little bit, like I'll do my eyebrows and then come back to it, but I didn't really need it this time, so I am gonna just wipe it away. I just zoomed you guys in a little bit closer so you can see kind of what I do to my eyebrows. I'm not going to do like a full on eyebrow tutorial. It's just, I wanna show you what products I use and kind of how I tackle my eyebrows for photographs because there are special things that I do. So I like to use a brow powder instead of like a pomade or a brow pencil. I don't know, I just find that the brow powder creates a softer, more natural brow while still having a lot of control over like the preciseness of it. So that's why I like to use a brow powder so I use the Anastasia Brow Powder, and this is in the shade Ebony. And then I like to use my Anastasia Number no. 12 brush. This is my absolute favorite eyebrow brush. I kind of start over here in the very front part, and I make sure that my line in the very front is nice and precise. And then I take the product slowly upwards. I do like that faded brow look and then I just start to fill in my brow like normal. I do fake this part right here where I like don't have a ton of hair. And then I feel like in photos my brows always look very not like blocky but they just I don't know, there's something about them that I don't like in this kind of end part. I feel like they don't look as like crisp 
or I, I don't want to say blocky because my brows don't ever look blocky but I just I just hope you know what I mean so I take my brow brush and I like to just extend my brow just a tiny bit like see I just extended it just the teeniest bit and I feel like it makes the world of a difference in a photo so it makes my brows definitely look like it comes to like a nice faded point so it makes my brows just look a little bit more elongated and yeah another really important step in the brows is to sculpt them with concealer and for this job I like to use my Glossier stretch concealer I use the shade G7 for this and I use a little small concealer brush the reason why I like to sculpt my brows out is so that there is even more definition to the brow area I just think I just think it looks really good in photos like close up and far away and the reason why I like to use my stretch concealer is because it is a like more natural more dewy concealer so I think it looks really nice around the brow area like everything is nice and like highlighted almost I won't usually take it all the way over here, like I might, but I typically just like to make sure that my kind of tail of the brow is nice and sculpted. And then I know you guys are familiar with this brush. This is my IT Cosmetics Concealer Brush. And I just like to kind of guide my brush around my brow so that everything is really nice and blended out. And next I will take my Glossier Boy Brow and just do the thing with my brows. For my eyes and how I did my eyes for like all my little birthday celebration stuff, I was using the Tati palette. I adore this palette. I think it's really lovely. I think the shades in it are really nice and yeah, I've just been really enjoying it. I do think that definitely wearing some sort of eyeshadow on your eyes is important. Um, it can just be just like this and leave it. This is a very common look of mine. I just I'll even do this with my bronzer a lot of the time, but I think something is important just to give yourself some nice definition in the eye area and make your eyes kind of pop a little bit more. I would even just leave it just like this, but I am going to go in with those darker shades, kind of mixing all three of them together, and then just like focusing it on the very outer corner. And then I was really enjoying just the look of a little bit of shimmer. I was mixing this shade and that one together. So these two shades I was mixing together for my eyelid. And that was just kind of my look. I do always like to take the brush that I was using for like my crease stuff and take whatever is left over on my brush and just take that underneath my eyes. So for my mascara, a few of you guys were asking me what mascara I was wearing in one of the photos that I put on my story this past weekend. And it was a mixture of the Lancome Monsieur Big and then I used the L'Oreal Telescopic to separate the lashes. The Monsieur Big can get kind of clumpy, so I do always like to use a separating mascara to kind of help it move along. And then this way I can kind of apply it pretty messily. And the reason why I like to use this mascara too is because it really lengthens the lashes as well. For my lips, I always find that lips is also a really important thing to make sure that you have on for a photo. I definitely know for me personally my lips would get really lost in a photo if I didn't have any product on them just because my lips don't have a whole lot of like natural color to them in my opinion. So my absolute favorite lip liner probably of all time is my MAC Spice and I always like to wear this liner. Oh 
Oh my gosh, it just looks so good. It is the definition of like my pinky brown nude, I feel. And then after I apply one of my favorite lip liners, I kind of can do whatever with a lip, whether that is wearing a gloss, a clear gloss, a colored gloss, or a regular lipstick. Today I am going to go in with my Glossier lip gloss in the shade Pony. I think the combo of these look very nice together. One thing that I forgot to mention is your actual hair. With a flash photo, sometimes those crazy flyaways will become a lot more visible and kind of more pronounced. For that, I have been really enjoying this like specific flyaway comb gel. And I just bought this like from like a literal Instagram ad. I bought two of them because they were doing like some crazy sale. It was like a two for one sale. They probably do it like all the time. You know how those Instagram companies try and get you that way. But I comb back my baby hairs literally every day, but especially when I know I'm about to be photographed just because I wanna make sure those baby hairs are nice and combed back and looking really good. And then I can also take this product and kind of smooth out my baby hairs on the actual top of my head. I usually just use clear brow gel for this step and I specifically really like the clear brow gel from Anastasia, but I figured I would give this one a try. I thought it would be fun to try something new and yeah. I'll leave it linked down below if you would like to purchase that one too, but I really just use clear brow gel like most of the time for this step. But anyway, here's the final look. Hopefully you guys found this video enjoyable and helpful and picked up some good tips that you might use for the holiday season coming up. I almost forgot my all-nighter spray. Let me know in the comment section below any of your tips for flashback in photos and what you do and what products you like. Maybe some drugstore products that you guys really like and swear by for flash photography. I would be really into trying that because I know that most of these products, if not all of them except for the Essence highlighter, were high-end. I'm not too familiar with drugstore products that are good for photos, so let me know what your favorites are down below. I could try making a video all about drugstore products that would be good for avoiding flashbacks, so let me know what your favorites are down below so I can try them. But that is going to be it for me today. If you aren't already subscribed, definitely go ahead and do so, and hopefully I see you next time.